off the Cape in Boston, uh, Cape Cod, there was a, a hurricane and uh, there was 70 mile an hour winds and uh, this massive storm going on in February of 1952 and two oil tankers both split in half in the same afternoon. And one of them got off an SOS, all of these coasts went to this one tanker and the other one, it split so abruptly and quickly that the bridge sunk with all the communications and they didn't get an SOS off. The back half stayed afloat and it went and floated down the coast past Chatham on the Cape. Somebody saw it, went to the Coast Guard there and said there's a, a boat floating out there. They had one boat left that was in a bay that nobody believed could get out across the bar with the, with the size of the surf that was going on with this storm. And these four young guys went out at 6 o'clock at night in February in sub-freezing weather to try and rescue 32 men on a half a tanker. <laughs> and that's what happened. Meanwhile, on the tanker, trying to stay afloat, they rigged up the, the tiller with chains and uh, started up the engines and they beached it so that they wouldn't sink and waited out there. So it's a crazy story and it's amazing. Um, it's not that well known, but it's, it's actually you know, the greatest small boat rescue in Coast Guard history. They went out on a boat that was 36 feet long with four men. It was a boat that uh, was supposedly able to carry 12 people in terms of being for a rescue. Uh, they arrive at the Pendleton that they've discovered, 32 people, 33 actually, that uh, survivors on the Pendleton. So doing the math, they're trying to figure out, can they e will this boat even hold that many men? And in fact, I believe there's been stories afterwards that they've tried to fit 36 men on that boat and haven't been able to figure it out uh, because it's, you know, it was, it's, it's a, when you see a boat that size and that many men, it's, it's not an easy feat. And we actually did it in the film, but <laughs> it, it, so it, it is doable. But to put that many people in that boat and then put them in 70 foot seas and having to come back across a bar, it's the fact that they could actually shepherd it through that situation and make it is astounding at night with no navigation. Seabird is the chief engineer on the boat. The interesting thing that happens on the Pendleton in terms of the dynamic is when it sunk, all the officers died. They were all on the bridge. So there was really no clear command of who should be in charge. Seabird, being the, the chief engineer, had the most knowledge about the boat. And uh, the way we try to make that character interesting working with Casey is that he's a reluctant hero. He doesn't want to be the man responsible. He doesn't want to he doesn't like being in charge. He sort of avoided that by walking down below, you know, in the in the bowels of the boat, and and not having to have to take on that that uh, the onus of the authority and and just the, just the weight I think of having to you know carry the responsibility. So that's that struggle that uh, we found interesting, and Casey really did a beautiful job with working through that and becoming a leader for the men and having to do that to save all of their lives because there is a lot of differing opinions going on on the boat of what they should do, you know, to the verge of almost a mutiny. So at a certain point, you know, that all comes to a, a climax. You know what I, uh, what I loved in Scott Silver's writing? Uh, like on the page, uh, Miriam is Bernie Webber's girlfriend. We meet them on their first date. And the thing that was really attractive for me about Miriam is she's a very strong, independent woman, which felt a little unusual for that time period. And she's, she's actually, she actually challenges Bernie to, to think more. And uh, she, she has several scenes where she stands up for him or tries to confront the situation for like not being right. And just to have a powerful woman like that in that time period, I thought was a, just a, a great opportunity. And then trying to find somebody that could have that, do that delicate dance between being strong but not intimidating for that period. Um, Holiday Granger did such a superb job and she, she just, you know, the chemistry between them was beautiful and it's, it really is the heart of the film and it's like you're so yearning for those two to make it back together and she's doing everything she can to try and help out from shore in terms of dealing with the superiors, dealing with the town and, uh, you know, rallying those efforts and while he's like, literally fighting for his life, you know, out in the ocean. Chris Pine plays Bernie, and something that was I loved working with Chris on is he really got to create a character with Bernie. It's like everything from 
from the mannerisms to the accent. It was such a fully formed character and an evolution of that character as he grew. And Chris, at every turn, surprised me with like the nuances and the, and the delicacy that he could put into that performance. And it really makes you root for him. And it's like it makes you know he's the he's the underdog in the film. We we set him up that way, and in this very earnest style. And Chris's commitment to it, I think, is it just shines on screen. Holiday Granger uh, plays Miriam, and I you know I wanted her in this film from the, from the get go. I'd seen her in some. Some, some films before and she just had this this strength and this innocence which is such an interesting combination to be able to pull off to be both because she is she's she's sort of uh, on the verge of this new generation in the 50s with rock and roll coming in and this sort of exuberance but there's still like the leftovers of the war and the depression and and she's sort of bridging that gap and Bernie is a little bit more from the older period and she's full of life and innocence, but at the same time, she's very strong. And being able to do that dance and play that performance, she just did a miraculous job. We wanted that, that, that loyalty and that innocence mixed in with you know, this heroicism. And trying to find those qualities was, you know, it was, a, it was a tricky thing to find. It's like where it didn't start to feel unearned and it came from a true place and he had all those qualities about him you know you could still feel the fear but you could you knew he was never going to waver and it's like that that kind of performance uh it was beautiful to watch what i loved with eric uh who you immediately think of as a very strong intimidating presence and you know we met and i said you know i want you to play this guy insecure he's like really <laughs> and um i said yeah i said you know clough has only just arrived at the Coast Guard station. He's from Virginia. He hasn't proven himself in front of these men yet. And he doesn't actually know this world. Like he doesn't know the East Coast and the Northeast and how it all works. So he's second guessing himself and we need to feel that throughout the film because he actually, it was, a, it was not a wise choice to send these men out. It turned out great in the end, but a man with more experience probably wouldn't have done it. And so, Eric had to bring all those nuances to his performances and he did an amazing job with it. I love Ben, ben uh, Foster in this movie. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's a contrarian to Bernie. He sort of, he informs the audience on, on how the rest of the Coast Guard station feels about him. You get the sense from him that, you know, Bernie is very much the B team. He hasn't earned the respect yet that the A team has at the Coast Guard station and we see that all through the eyes of Ben Foster's performance. He gives him a hard time, he calls him on things, and he questions him. And then you see that respect that is earned throughout the film uh, from Ben's point of view. And he does such a beautiful job of those nuances and those touchstones throughout the film that they have a moment at the end of the film which I think is just beautiful. Just the scope of what these men went through. I think it's gonna, it's surprising you know, it's like in with it's in three D, and you get to sit in this world and be in the space that they were in. It's uh, it's like all consuming, and uh, I feel like you know we really captured the uh, the enormity of it and what they went through.